Hi, I'm Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. The garden is changing so fast right now. I feel like even weekly garden tours are looking very, very different from week to week. And even though it is mid-June, the garden is still like fully in transition. It is not fully a summer garden or a spring garden. There's still things that I planted in November in the garden. Everything is kind of at a different place and it's, it's a bit of a mishmash between new little babies and things that are ready to harvest. So if we start here along the tomato row, you can see I'm attempting to manage the weeds over here. Um, we'll see how that goes. But the tomatoes are starting to get up to trellis level and they have started needing pruning, um, which is a whole big job in itself. Although, uh-oh, this one looks like it got knocked over, stepped on. Whoop, yep. Now, good example here. This right here, this could just grow up and become a whole new tomato plant. Um, this tomato can definitely come back. After something like this, it'll just be a little bit behind. However, I have been saving some of my bigger, um, what are they called, suckers in water and rooting them just in case something like this happened. So I do actually have a larger plant ready to go in this spot. Further down, there's this one that is getting kind of out of hand. Um, I keep meaning to film a video showing you guys how to prune tomatoes, uh, which is why this one has not been pruned and is going wild but I keep not having time to do it, so it keeps getting more and more wild. All right, so on the other side of the tomatoes, I feel like things look very, very different right now because all of this garlic that was here is gone. That got pulled out a couple of days ago and all of the onions that were remaining have also got pulled out. So these peppers really have their own space now, nothing getting in their way. And you can see, they are very happy about that. Um, I am always surprised every time I come out and look at them, just how big they're getting. They're getting big so fast. And I'm thinking it won't be long until I'm harvesting my first pepper. This is the one I've been showing you guys. You can see him right back there. I'll go back and look at my garden drawing and put the name of what sort of pepper I think it is on the screen for you guys. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see which of these peppers is actually the very first producer. I think this is also really interesting to look at. This plant right here and this plant right here are both fish peppers, but the amount of variegation on them is so different. This one has a lot of white leaves and this one looks almost normal until you start looking up real close to it. Man, can you guys hear that thunder? It's only like 11 o'clock in the morning and a thunderstorm at 11 o'clock is super weird for this area. All right, I'm coming all the way to the back where all the weeds are. I have some of my sunflowers. This one that got eaten down has not come back yet, but I think it will. And this one over here looks very dead for no discernible reason whatsoever. Like it got eaten a little bit, sure, but usually after it gets eaten, like it doesn't flop over, it just tries to make new leaves. Um, so I'm not really sure what could have gotten to that one that has had no effect on this one. Also looking at my basil scattered around the garden, it is looking like it's about time to harvest from them. I think I like harvesting from them when they're this size and chopping like the tops off so that they start splitting a lot more closer to the base and I feel like it makes it a more stable plant overall that doesn't need as much support. And you, even though it's just a little bit off the top, when you have like 10 or 15 plants, you'd be surprised how much basil that actually is. My partner recently reminded me that uh, a couple years ago I was making pesto twists bread thing. Um, and that sounds like a great use for a single small batch of pesto today. All right, let's walk down this other row now. We can check in on the cabbage. This is the one that got eaten, like the entire head got eaten off by a groundhog. And now it's just growing back multiple small heads. Um, and so far it hasn't tried to go to seed or anything, which I think is really interesting considering today is 
uh, about to be 99 degrees, according to the weather report. Um, so this is this has just been a curiosity of mine <laughs> throughout the last bit of the growing season. Just, just kind of watching and, and seeing what the plant does. The leaves are definitely tough feeling, like it doesn't feel like it would be very fun to eat, um, but it is fun to watch. All right, and so I do have this big empty space here now that I need to do something with. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm doing with this yet because I hadn't, I hadn't planned so well for this space to actually be empty. I kind of thought that the peppers would end up, I would end up needing to put more here. So right now all I have here, I have a little bit of ginger. Um, this is coming up from some roots that I planted. And then I have this lettuce here going to seed, which um, as soon as it makes seeds, I will be pulling that out. And then farther along down this row, this is all eggplant right here. Um, so if you have ideas for what I could do with this area here, let me know. Like maybe I could try some summer squash here or corn, not real sure yet. I did have beans there last year, like bush beans. And I do have some bush beans over here on the far side of the garden. I have all my noodle beans on this trellis here and I'm about to plant some pole beans with the tomatoes. So I probably don't need more beans, um, but I don't have any squash currently growing. And also I'm about to harvest my potatoes. So I will have some extra space there as well that needs something. These are the potatoes in question, and you will notice that I pulled all of the turnips and beets that went to seed here because they were drying up, they were done, and now I have potatoes. Um, this one right here is a sweet potato. I assume it will take over. I put another one down at that end. And these potatoes are actually like pretty much ready. You can see how they're like kind of dying back a little bit. And if you actually dig down, um, you don't even have to dig down very far to see that the potatoes are like popping themselves out of the soil. Uh, these are purple potatoes. Uh, so, I mean, I think these are good sized potatoes, but I'm gonna wait just a couple more days until I have room in my house. Uh, maybe I'll insert a video here showing you how full my house is of onions and garlic right now that are trying to cure. Um, it rains so unpredictably here. I don't feel safe leaving them outside for very long, but I think uh, I can probably set them up in the crawl space now that some of the initial drying is over uh, for the, the long haul for the curing. Draco says, look at me, mom. I'm so cute. Okay, coming back to the front again by the trellises, I still have this giant kale that I have not done anything with, and it is shading out this nasturtium underneath it. So I probably should at least remove these leaves that are over the nasturtium, even if I don't have a plan to eat them right away. And so this trellis back here, it did have onions on the inside. Those are gone now. And now I have cucumbers here. These first two came up with the first time I planted. And now I've got new baby. This new baby I saw yesterday, it was here. It has been chomped all the way down. Let's see if there's any coming up on the other side. Oh, well, no, I do not see any babies on the other side. Whatever's munching the cucumbers has been very hungry lately. And this is a bit of a late season start for cucumbers. Uh, mostly I did this because I'm trying to mitigate the effects of things like vine borers and squash bugs. And so I'm messing with the timing of all of my squash related plants. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Now this radish jungle is on its way to becoming fully out of control. Um, I am struggling to walk through here now Although I am very happy about all of the flowers for the pollinators, it is a bit much. <laughs> and it's not even making like a ton of pods. Like you can see some of them are making pods, 
but a lot of these are just dropping their flowers when they're done. So that's something interesting to note. I do hope to save some seeds off of these, but we'll see if I can put up with the radish jungle long enough. These over here though, finally the peas are all out and these have the space to vine up the trellis. Um, they are looking really healthy now that they're starting to just kind of zoom up. I think like, like from here up, this is all new growth this week. And same over here, you can see they're starting to put out the little tendrils. Now these, once they get going, are gonna be unstoppable. If you saw my noodle bean trellis last year, it was insane. I could not eat the beans fast enough. All right, down over here on the last row, I put a sweet potato in here. We'll see how good that does because I usually don't compost this area, but like I know sweet potatoes take a lot of room and so I wanted to make sure that it was somewhere where it could really fill out, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and I have not pulled the garlic here yet. It is looking sort of ready. It also got flopped over in the storm, and I've noticed some of the test ones I've pulled are, are kinked at the base of the stem. And even if they weren't ready when they got blown over, I'm not sure if they're gonna continue bulbing up after that kink in their stem. But I am gonna wait a little bit and see because they're only just now starting to show the signs of the brown leaves that you look for when you're determining whether or not your garlic is ready. However, the peppers and the zinnias in this area are doing quite good. This garlic is not near as fluffy as the other garlic was, so it's not really in the way as much as the other garlic was. And I actually do have a flowering zinnia here. Just gorgeous little flower. And then up the ways, I have still some Brussels sprouts that have gone to seed. This one has not gone to seed and uh, it is becoming another curiosity type plant. Uh, but the rest of this is gonna come out very soon. And then once the Brussels sprouts and the garlic come out, this is gonna be another like kind of empty space that needs something to fill it. And I think this is the area that I had originally budgeted for bushing squash, like zucchinis and yellow squash and all of that. And corn is definitely on the list of things to grow, so maybe I'll put corn there again. I had corn there last year and it did just fine. Oh right, and back here by where the garlic is, I have started putting beans along this back row here because if I look at it from here, you can kind of see the line of peppers. It only goes about to the middle. Um, and so I have this section here planted with beans and I need to succession plant another section behind this middle bit with beans. All right, taking a quick look at the raised bed, you'll notice I took out almost all of the cilantro that had gone to seed. I left this section because it was a very green section, could use a couple more days to dry out the seeds, um, but a lot of the rest of the seeds were very dry and you will see that video very soon. But now that the cilantro is out, um, the sage can get a little more sun. Not that it looks like it was missing it. Um, the sage is like pretty indestructible to be honest. And it's looking like parsley is gonna be ready to harvest seeds from soon-ish as well. But I am glad to have all of this have its own space now as well. Oh look, baby orb weaver right here in my time. These spiders come to my garden every year, make beautiful webs, and eat a lot of my bugs, so they are welcome. All right, lastly, we can take a quick look at the berry patch. It is looking approximately the same, I would say, except for the strawberry, which is going everywhere. You can see it's got this halo of plants that it is putting out via runners. And that is so exciting. I can't wait for all these strawberry plants. And I might actually try clipping some of them and then moving them out to the edges and seeing if they survive. I did actually add a rosemary plant here in between these last two raspberry plants, mostly because the place that I was planting my ras ro rosemary, um, it kept dying like over and over. It would just go black. Uh, so I feel like there's something wrong with the soil where I was originally trying to plant it. It was kind of up close to the house. 
and this house is from like the early 1900s so yeah the chances that there's something nasty in the soil around it pretty high I would say um, so just the fact that it's dying I went ahead and moved it out here where everything seems okay it's farther from the house and then if this one dies then I don't know what I'm gonna do then maybe it's it's the plants I've been buying but it's probably the soil I realized I should probably also talk a little bit about these before I go these are the straw bales that I've been growing mushrooms on you can see kind of the crusted remains of some of the last flush here. Um, these ones, the ants got to them way too bad before I could pick them, so I just let them have them. This is golden oyster, and this one is supposed to be uh, snow oyster. And this one has fruited twice, and this one has not fruited at all. Um, and I'm not yet concerned about that, because if this one fruited, then the method was solid. And this is a different variety, so maybe it's taking longer. Ooh, listen to that thunder. I haven't had mushrooms come up in the actual garden yet, and I think that that's uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the oysters that I put out there, they did not have nearly as much substrate as these did. So I would assume that it would take it a lot longer to colonize and get, like, get itself solid enough that it feels like it has the energy to fruit. And then the second reason is the wine caps that I put out, they usually do fruit in the fall. So I'm not expecting a fruiting from them for a few more months. All right, I'm gonna go get myself inside before this thunderstorm hits, but thank you guys so much for watching. And if you didn't know, I put out a garden tour every single Wednesday. So check back here next week to keep up with things and the playlist where you can watch all the previous garden tours, not just this year, but also previous years will come up right here. Thanks for watching again, and until next time, happy gardening.